Hey there, welcome back to Farmcraft. I'm John, and this is a 1975 Cat D3 that this idiot paid way too much money for. I'll go ahead and say it, uh, at the time I bought it, equipment prices were really high, and they have since come down, and unfortunately I just bought it the wrong time, but I needed a dozer to do that pond job that I just finished. Uh, I couldn't keep waiting and looking, or I wouldn't be able to do the job, so, you know, it is what it is. At this point, I've done a lot of fixing up on her, and uh, she, she did pretty admirably on that pond job, actually. Uh, her major issue is the fuel tank, and that's what I'm gonna address today. I also want to address the shimming of the, I forget what you call this thing. It's the track that the idler wheels slide on, and you can see it's got uh, a little bit of play there. So those idlers go up and down a lot. And that should be easy to do. Uh, I'm gonna shim from underneath, and uh, we'll, we'll get into that later. But first step is this fuel tank. The fuel tank is behind here. It is welded into the frame of the machine. It's not something that you can remove. And man, I wish I could. If I could pop it off of there, you know, I could do the old trick, put rocks in it, tie it to my tractor tire, roll it around, clean it out. It'd be a piece of cake. But uh, that is not an option with this. So, I have some thoughts. Let me tell you what I'm thinking. This is the only access I have to it, and there's a baffle, at least one baffle in the middle that kind of cuts the tank in two, or maybe three. So you can't really access the tank. You can't reach in there and vacuum it out or anything like that. I think a lot of people are probably gonna be disappointed that my plan isn't to line this thing with some of the new, like, rubber tank liner systems that they have but I just don't see it being necessary. It is very standard for equipment like this to have a mild steel fuel tank, and they'll run for years and years and years and not have issues, and then eventually you will have problems and you need to clean them out. What I see as the major problem is I have no way to clean this thing out. So my plan is to cut a hole in it, either right on top here or maybe there, and once I have the hole in it, I can clean it out, and then I'm gonna make a larger plate with a gasket and bolt it back down so that I have access to clean it out again in the future if I ever need to. The point being, there's no sense in lining it. Once you clean it out, it should be good for a long time. And if it's easy to clean out, it's, it's not a big deal. It doesn't need a liner. I'm sure those liners are great. They're not cheap. Uh, it seems like a, a lot of fuss and headache to me uh, if it's not necessary. So that's my thoughts. Let's get this thing drained out. So that is the valve. I had to replace that. So that's the type, it's like an air valve uh, on the bottom of a compressor. When I open it, the fuel's just gonna start dumping out. I have no way to control it. Um, should come down through this hole. So I'm gonna make some kind of, I wish I had a form of funnel, but I don't. But I'll get something and jam it in there so that it will come out of this hole and then I can, I can get it in a funnel and uh, drain it into a fuel can. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. I have this little funnel and it just barely squeezes up in there. It won't come back out. So I take that straight into a fuel can. You might recall that I just replaced this drain valve when I was working on the pond, fighting with the fuel tank. So this thing is brand new. It would be nice if this brand new thing would work. Is it just slipping? It's not even unthreading. I think that's what's happening. Ah, uh, piece of junk. Hey. Yeah, and what you're seeing here and here and back here are speaker well, magnets, various magnets. And I'm going to be interested to see, once we get this thing drained out, if I have a big concentration of particles around those. I've got a, uh, an endoscope we're going to be looking inside this tank with in a few minutes here, so let's let it drain on out. Thank you. 
See you in a couple hours. All right, we are just about done. This is from Vivor, and this video is sponsored by Vivor, but they didn't want me to review this. They want me to review something else that's coming up later. Doesn't fit with a bulldozer quite as well, but Vivor is kind of like me, all over the place. Do a little bit of everything. So, let's see if we can get a look inside this tank. One of the main things I wanted to look for was what, what was underneath these bolts where the armrests go. And it looks like they've just, um, there's just kind of a little cylinder there that the, the bolt threads down into. So probably worth avoiding those. All right, so we are looking directly at one of the baffles, or the first baffle that I can see. I think it's probably just one, but boy, it's hard to tell. I don't know how that baffle attaches to the top. So we are headed right towards that baffle. Hard to get good footage here because the more the camera extends out, the more it shakes around. I'm trying to get a look at that little opening at the bottom of the baffle. I extend the camera all the way to the bottom and then change to a side view. Hey, look at that. Maybe that's the fuel pickup. Bet you it is. And you can see the bottom. It looks like it's just surface rust, but when you touch it, it's actually a thick layer of sludgy junk. That's all gotta go. I kind of have some idea what's in there and now I need to decide where I want to cut this thing. There's only one baffle. It does not attach at the top and it's also got some openings at the bottom and the tank does extend over to here. These are for the armrests. I don't see myself using those in the future but I will avoid, avoid those bolts. I think what I'm gonna do is uh, basically cut out big enough for my arm to reach through like that and I can actually use those bolts as part of the uh, whatever's gonna bolt on the new plate yeah something like that before I go cutting on this and throwing a bunch of sparks in there yes it's only diesel fuel it's probably not gonna blow up but probably <laughs> probably isn't something when you're talking about blowing up that you wanna you wanna tempt fate on so uh, I want to fill this thing up with water and before I fill it up with water, I need to unhook the fuel pickup. So far all I've done is the drain. If you look further up, right there is the fuel pickup. Still not terribly accessible, but there it is right there. fuel line. So at first glance this doesn't look too bad. I'm not sure if this has an o-ring in it or if it's just uh, like a taper sealing surface. Yeah, I probably ought to take it apart and take a look at it. But in order to fill this thing up with water I'm gonna have to put it back in. Well, that looks not so bad. I'll clean it up and we'll put it back on and fill this thing up with water. There's still a little fuel at the bottom of that tank, so I'm just gonna stuff a rag down in there. Try to absorb as much, much of it as I can. All right, that's what it looks like without the rags. And I hope you guys will be able to see this. <laughs> There's like a quarter inch of just junk on the bottom of that tank. See all that? So this video is sponsored by Vivor. I'm up in my wood shop because they wanted me to check out this wood planer. And I thought, you know, a lot of my audience is going to be interested in something like this. 
This has a 13 inch wide capacity, six and a half inch deep capacity, and runs off 110 volts. They've got it priced on their website at just under $300. Uh, with the discount code, you're gonna pay a good bit less than 300 bucks for this. So let's check this thing out and see what it can do. You can see there's no dust on it. I haven't even used it yet. In-feed and out-feed tables fold up for storage. Seems built pretty well. It even has a, a cast iron base on it. I was surprised to see. I expected stamped sheet metal under there, but that's cast iron. It has some nice features to it. It's got rollers here on the in-feed and out-feed table, and it's even got some rollers on top. If you were to take a long board, you could put it on top and bring it back and then run it through again. That's kind of cool. I wish my big planer had that. So I'm gonna plane this walnut board. It already has a piece of tear out right around that hole. I'm using a shop back for dust collection. You know, I have to say, I'm, I'm surprised with that. that uh, that's doing a really nice job. It doesn't have a lot of vibration. It's not even that loud. Not just saying this, it's, it's performing better than I expected for such a small planer. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's as nice as my big planer, but that planer's a $4,000 planer. It's a totally unfair comparison to even talk about that planer with this. But you know what's interesting? My depth capacity on this is six and a half inches. It's exactly the same on this six and a half inches. I'm impressed if you're getting into woodworking and you need a first planer I think this would be a great way to start Because uh, this thing is going to be able to plane. It's not going to plane as fast as a is a huge four thousand dollar planer will but this is planing quite good uh, reasonably fast and uh, It's going to be able to plane anything up to 13 inches wide. That's a big board. So if you're in the market for a wood planer, you want something that'll do some work, but doesn't cost a fortune, check Vivor. I'll leave links in the description. Let's get back to work. All right, I need it to be at least four inches wide. A little wider wouldn't hurt. My only reservation about doing it up here is that this is not flat. It's supposed to be flat, so I guess I could, I can press it down a little bit. Maybe do a little body work on it once I get it opened up and try to flatten it out, but the piece that I make is going to have to fit. I thought about going down on the side, but I don't want to do that because then I'm just asking for leaks. Here, the only thing that's going to happen is the fuel will occasionally splash the underside and there's just no chance of any significant leaking. So that's what I'm going to cut out. I'll probably go ahead and round the, the corners. In fact, I may drill those first. Sticking a garden hose into a fuel tank and preparing to turn it on. Never done that before. not being flat this might be a challenge we will see all right I put a couple shims in there and it's got a pretty good grip on it I am gonna take it slow and steady and we'll see how this does answer not good all right, that's a long way from flat. I am just gonna do it by hand. All right, now I got four one inch discs I need to fish out of there when we get to that point. But there's plenty of other stuff that needs to come out too, so 
don't think it matters. I can drain this fuel out of, I mean that <laughs> fuel, I can drain the water out of here the same way I did the fuel. All right, we're done draining and you ready for the big reveal? Let's see what we got in here. Oh wow. Well, the side that I could see right here actually looks bad, but doesn't look as bad as the side I couldn't. So yeah, 100% this needed to, needed to happen. So that's the pickup tube, huh? I mean, look at how much junk there is. This other tube I was looking at is just uh, something that fell in the tank, apparently. Yeah, before I go fishing too much out, I need to file this and take the burrs off before I end up cutting myself. Didn't seem like much, but man, that is hell on a filter. So there's the majority of the stuff that came out of the tank, but this caught all the power washing uh, runoff. And I'm kind of curious how much sludge is at the bottom of this now. Oh, wow. Look at all that junk. So I don't know if it comes across on camera, but that looks a lot better. There's still a little bit of junk in there. I'm gonna hit the bottom again with, uh, with the power washer. Then I'm gonna air, uh, dry it out with towels and rags and then blow it out. And that'll be it for today. We'll let it sit overnight. shocked at how well that cleaned up. It really looks quite good. And there's not a lot of pitting. Here's the other side of the baffle. Really looks pretty darn good. So I'm going to take this piece of cable and try to fish it through this pickup tube to uh, clear that out. I really expected there to be some junk in there. Maybe you guys saw something come out when I was on the underside, but uh, I don't see anything in there. Mm -hmm. 
I think it looks better in person than it does on camera, actually. That looks really good. So before I put it back together, I'm gonna to wipe this out with some mineral spirits and really get all the rest of the rust off of there. But um, I have some work to do first. I need to make this cover plate. plate actually has just a touch of a curve to it and so does the tank. And it doesn't take much force at all to, uh, to even those out. So I need it to have just, well, trying to curve it two ways is going to be hard. I think the better thing to do is going to be to try to pound this down a little bit and flatten it out this way a little bit. But I think even right now, if I pulled those together with bolts, it would probably be good. But I'll see if I can get it a little better. Yeah, it doesn't take much force at all to get the wobble out of that. So the bolts will pull that together. Nice. Now this is the tap size hole, so I, this is the cover plate. I need to take this on the drill press and increase the hole size to here so it's got clearance to the bolt. See, the bolt won't go through now. These I need to tap so that they will accept the threads. Now we just need a gasket. So this is a Buna in rubber, nitrile rubber. It is the same stuff O-rings are made out of and it's fuel and oil resistant. Got this on the old Scamazon.
All right, everything's ready. Uh, let's give this one final good clean out. And um, then we're gonna put this thing back together. All right, final product. I wiped it down twice and rag came out with a little bit on it. I mean, you could keep going, but at this point you're, you're kind of wasting your time. This is so much better than it was, and uh, there's filters on this thing. If a tiny little speck of something gets through, well, that's what the filters are for. Uh, they're just not going to get clogged up in no time at all. Uh, being totally chock full of junk, all the junk is gone. So let's get this thing buttoned up. <laughs> I might want to get my light first. Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, I do want to put some Loctite on these. I don't want them rattling loose, and it also helps to seal the threads. Now, for diesel fuel to work its way up against gravity and leak out of these threads is pretty... Pretty silly to think about, but yeah, you know. All right. Hopefully I'll never see the inside of that tank again. But if I need to, it's not gonna be that hard to get in there. All right, ready to put this pet cock back in, but this reminds me, I had these, good grief, that thing is on there. I had these magnets on here, and from the inside, I did not see any evidence of them doing anything. When I first opened up the tank, I expected to see concentrations around those magnets, but you couldn't see any evidence of them from the inside. A speaker magnet, hard drive magnets, and the other magnet. Camera's in the way, let me, uh, Move you guys, I'm going to get those off of there. All right, here's all the junk that was in there. Dried out, and it's just uh, bits of rust. This is a really strong magnet. Eh. I mean, this stuff is somewhat magnetic, but it's not, it's not crazy magnetic. Like This magnet is way stronger than a hard drive magnet, so it's not sticking to it that well. And I guess it just didn't... It's not magnetic enough that through the tank it didn't make much uh, much of an effect. I think putting a magnet on is a good idea, still worth doing, but um, not always going to help you that much. So this is my drain valve, and I'm just putting a simple ball valve in. So that'll be nice, very easy to drain. The problem is, is that it could rattle and actually drain when I don't want it to. So I've got some 3 8 fuel line here that I'm going to put on here and then plug it. It'll act as a backup in case that valve ever opens. I won't lose all my fuel and I'm going to need something on here anyway if I ever drain it. And then the other end turns out a Hex plug, I think that's for half inch PEX. We'll go down in there and we'll act as a good plug for that. All right, so that can just tuck up in there and that's ready to go. Now I need to put in the supply side PET cock. All right, there you can see the petcock, and that capped line there is the fuel line I need to put on it. Before I do though, I wanna blow that line out. And that line, it snakes through here, 
and ends up right there at my filter. So I'm going to take that apart and blow that out backwards and clean out the filter. I've got this little this valve off so that I won't get any air past it. And that is a cheapo little plastic valve. I'm going to look for a brass one that I can replace that with. But um, that'll work for now. Don't worry, it's only temporary. All right, I've got these disconnected. So since I have the floor plate off, it's actually easier just to take the filter back this way. And more of the good stuff. That's all the junk that was getting sucked into the fuel system. And this should be the last of it. Let me give this a good clean up. So now we just need to blow this out. I doubt there's anything in it, but crack that fuel line and get the fuel to this point so that I don't have to re-bleed this whole thing. Before we do that, I'm going to have to put some fuel in the tank and hook the line up. <laughs> Getting ahead of yourself, John. Click. This is what happens with me and paint. The heck. I'm going to have to go buy a different can of paint apparently. This thing will only spray if I'm actively shaking it. But I might as well try to get something on it. I found another can of yellow. Maybe this will work. <laughs> of course it won't. Nice. I actually found something. Doesn't look half bad. Yes, I just used marking paint. So I got sidetracked today and didn't get to work on this. Uh, I did get out to the store and get some paint. The guy assured me this was cat yellow. Uh, I can live with that. So first step on cleaning this fuel that I got out of that tank, obviously I don't want to just dump it back in because um, it had a lot of sediment in it. First thing I did was dump it into some clean buckets and let that settle. And then I've been going back and forth and also into some smaller containers with the, the dirtier stuff, letting everything settle out. And I've got the fuel as clean as I can. And now I've put it back in those fuel containers. Then I'm gonna take it up to my fuel tank this is my 500 gallon diesel tank. See, the pump goes straight into this filter and then out. So, no junk in that fuel. This little rubber stopper here I can put in that line because I have to go open the petcock from the tank and it's going to want to start dumping so that'll let me get back over here and then the idea is I'll get this full bleed it out pretty well then I can plug it into this and uh, we'll be good to go should be theoretically maybe all right let's see if I can do this without making a huge mess I want to make sure all the air comes out so I'm going to let it run into this beaker for a little while Eh, let's see what happens. Yeah, we're starting to get some fuel. Not much. Probably 
get right in your way, but I am just not getting much flow there. So yeah, this fuel line comes out of the tank, it goes up and then back down, so it's air locking. That's what's going on. Think about what I want to do here. All right, I've got this syringe, and I'm going to try to pull it through if I can. Move you guys so that my hand's not right in your way. Filter. Give this thing another good pump just to make sure I don't have any air in it. Flow. That's certainly enough to run it. Okay. Give it a little glow plug. Let's see if this thing's going to start. Fuel tank is fixed. While I'm working on this thing, there's one more thing I want to try to fix. This is the output of the muffler. So that's basically all the exhaust comes through this. But the stack is much larger. And what ends up happening is it will leak. It goes back down through here and then a bunch of smoke blows into this area. And it makes the side panel on that side black. And uh, Basically, I think I need to machine a bushing that will allow me to go over this and then inside of this and have a tight fit there. Might be challenging because things aren't perfectly centered. Actually, looking at this further, that thing is loose. And, huh. I thought I welded that on there. We better pop this hood off of here and see what's going on under there. Well, that's a problem. Shocking that that leaks, isn't it? I know what happened here and I think I have a plan. So I welded, not this, but I welded this onto there. And I tried to get it vertical, but when I went to put the hood on, it wasn't quite vertical and it was, it was getting pushed pretty hard. I mean, this is pretty heavy and then you bolt it down. So it was getting jammed that way, and I think that ended up breaking it at the flange. But there's still plenty of, of metal there. It's, it's good and solid, plenty of thickness. It's like 16 gauge, and this is also pretty thick. So I think I can make this work. I just need to get this welded on and get it in the right position so that it's not under any tension when the hood is on. My plan is I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to put a few dabs of PC7 under there, put this on, put the hood on, and let the PC7 set up so that it'll be in the right spot and kind of held in position for me so then I can take the hood off and do some spot welds, hold it better in position, and then work my way around it and keep it in that same position. So that's the plan. Let's see if that works.
All right, that looks pretty well centered. And hopefully I've got some epoxy contact there enough to keep it centered when I pull that hood back off. Right there is where it seems to want to be. Looks pretty good that's what it did look like so I'll go around the other side and get this finished up and show you the final result all right loving that thin stuff so a lot of stop and start otherwise you blow right through it but I got it sealed up pretty well built up some areas that weren't quite as thick I think that's pretty good as long as it'll go on there without torquing it a whole bunch Yeah, that's good. So I'm sealed to this point, but there's a gap here. And uh, I think the easiest thing to do is just going to be to stuff some fiberglass insulation in there. That should seal it up well enough. Really, this is more of a Venturi because the velocity of the air is this way, so it would probably suck air that way. But. That'll do it. Let's put the stack back on. Fuel tank is fixed. Exhaust is fixed. So the only thing left to do is shimming the idlers. All right, so shimming these idlers. Now the way this works, well, it's all covered in dirt. I probably should have cleaned it off, but um, this gap is way too big. I need to get that down to like an eighth to a quarter at most. So the way this works, there's a, a grease cylinder in there that pushes the idler wheel out to tension the track and it slides along this rail. And over time, the bottom of the rail, well, this bracket and the bottom of the rail have worn and you can actually see it looks like somebody shimmed it before there's a piece welded on here I don't know if that's factory that's probably a, a patch somebody did and it's completely worn through it so I need to fix it now the wear occurs on the bottom it would be very easy because everything's nice and square up here to just shim it here but then I'm going to continue to have wear on the bottom and eventually it'll be ruined so the thing to do is to take the, right now those dozers sitting on the wheel, which of course pushes it up, and then this comes down and sits on that bracket. So basically I need to jack the dozer up and take the pressure off the wheel so now the wheel's hanging, this will fall down, and I'll have access underneath. Yeah, I could definitely use the blade to pick it up, but then I'm, first of all, the cylinders leak. I need to fix those. That's a whole other issue. Uh, but I just don't want it sitting on the hydraulics the whole time I'm doing this. So I'm going to get some bottle jacks. We're going to get under there and we're going to jack this thing up. You can see I've got the gap at the bottom on both sides. This isn't going to be the easiest thing in the world. Um, there would definitely be some benefit to taking this track off of here, but this track, you have to drive one of the pins out. And 
I've looked at this many times. It is, you know, there's supposed to be like one that has like a little um, indention on it to show you which one is the master pin to take the track apart. And there's no, there's not one that I can tell definitively. And the other thing is, is usually for this type, this old style track, you need a pin press. I don't have one. So trying to take this track off is going to be a tremendous job and it's not going to make it that much easier. So I'm going to try to do it without. I'm going to come under here with a grinder and I'm going to grind this entire previous shim off. This here, I don't know if you can see, is at such an angle that what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make a piece that has the same angle and put it in so that it'll end up square. So it's going to be a little triangle that goes from narrow to wider as it comes out. And then I should be able to weld it on the ends and then all the way down the side here and get it to stay in position and then just put however thick I need a new wear strip on this rail. It's really worn down in there too. I may have to reach in there with my welder and put a bead back there and then grind it so that it'll sit flat. So let me get out the grinder, get to work. I'm going to spare you guys uh, a lot of that. Well, I've got this thing all cleaned up. I've got that uh, that wear plate off. And of course it's worse than I thought. When I hold a straight edge on there and look up in there, the rail is worn down close to half an inch. I mean, there's a lot of material there missing. And the wear area comes out almost to the edge of the shoe. So it's not like I can just put a plate in there and expect it to do fine because it doesn't have anything behind it and it's going to end up bending. <sighs> so I think the content generator strikes again. Uh, this is going to be much more involved than I was anticipating. I think I'm going to need to take this track off of here and the other side too. Uh, what that's going to allow me to do is get this whole idler out of the way so that I have access to the back side. Then I could put a plate on there and from the back side I'll be able to weld and fill that entire area with weld. I'll also have much better access to this area here to get a good repair on that. So what this all boils down to is I think I have to end the video here because uh, this is going to be a big job, enough to make a video all on its own, I bet. <laughs> Getting these tracks off, I don't know, we'll see. I have an idea in mind, it doesn't involve a pin press, and that's probably going to be the next video, so. But let me not end here laying down on the ground. I'm real happy with how the fuel system went. I've got a nice clean fuel tank, clean filters, everything's bled, it runs well, and I've got the exhaust working right. We're really getting there. You know, other than this track issue, the main thing that's left on my mind is the engine and its use of oil. Now, it doesn't use that much oil. It uses a quart every three or four hours. For an old farm machine, that, that's totally doable. Just keep putting oil in it. But I'm kind of curious. You know, it has really good power and it runs well. It's not like it's stumbling or, you know, having trouble idling or anything like that. So I tend to think, and I probably need to, need to check the compression and see how the compression is on the cylinders. It's possible that my oil leakage is through like the valve guides and that's something maybe I could go in and replace that and get this engine running tip top. I don't know. I need to do some research and figuring out how to check, check all that. If you know, let me know. Oh, and I almost forgot. There's more hydraulic cylinder work to do. Yeah, this cylinder here is leaking now since the pond job. And the one that I replaced the rod is doing great. That one's leaking. This one, that one's doing okay. That one leaks a little bit and it's got some uh, damage on the rod. So I probably ought to just go ahead and replace that one and then do that one again, because it didn't cooperate. So some hydraulic work, shim the idler wheels and decide what I want to do with the engine. And after that, you know, really, this machine would be tip-top. I'm going to be scratching my head, trying to figure out what I'm going to do about these tracks and see if I can get them apart. I've been warned that it's a bear, 
uh, even with a pin press sometimes. So I don't know. Maybe it's not as bad as I'm expecting it to be. But obviously, I'm, I'm not anticipating this to be easy. So rest assured, I'm going to be working on that. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you on the next one. Yeah, that color definitely looks better. Well, you can see the old color is <laughs> pretty faded.